Hello and welcome to another video on Power BI on the channel. Uh, today we are going to look into some more basic DAG functions and uh, what is row context and how we can use to create uh, calculated columns and summaries. To that, first we are going to be creating a calculated column in our table financials. For that, you just need to go to the data table, or oh, sorry, data tab, and going to click new column. The column we are going to be creating is called cost per unit. So we're going to rename this cost per unit and use the column that we require to calculate the outcome, which is going to be uh, cost, cost of goods sold divided by units sold. So that we get the we get the result for the cost per unit. It's going to hit enter and we will get the result in our column that we created. So as we can see in our calculated column cost per unit, the result is written basis row on row by row basis. Power BI for the calculated column needs to know uh, the every row that we it is going to be calculating. But in in my years, that usually doesn't happen. The, in my years, the Power BI will aggregate the result regardless of what rows are need to, needed to be calculated. But in calculated column, if you want to divide the things row wise and want to see each row's results, you can use a calculated column. Otherwise, if you just need the desired calculation and results, you, you're going to be needing measures. That's all. So let's look at our other function. Uh, for that, we are going to be creating our measure. Uh, we have to just select the table we're going to be creating the measure. We're going to select the new measure. Uh, this measure will be about average and how we can use two columns to get the average. Uh, we're, we're going to be calling the function average x. We have to provide the table name for it to aggregate row by row. Uh, we have only one table that we need, which is called financials. Let's select financials. Just need the financial table. Now we need the expressions for it. We we have two column called C for the S divided by units sold. And we will get the desired average result for and we just have to hit enter and we will get the desired result. Let's check it out in our report fan. Select the uh, visual, let's select the card visual and put the calculated measure that we created. There is another way we can do this uh, by using calculated uh, column that we created cost per unit. And what we can do is we can go and say financials, let's create a measure and say average, let's call it average 2. And what we will going to be using now is average function instead of average A and give it a column that we created called cost per unit and it will result the same result. Now let's check it out into another one and let's see we will get the same result. But the difference between the two is we have to save the space if you want to get the desired result which is it was going to be calculating the average then this one this my year average x function is better because we are just using one my year and using less memory and less storage to get the calculated outcome we need instead of creating a calculator first calculate a column first and then using that to create a my year and get the desired result so for this purpose this average function that we created just using average x function in my year is a better option that because it will use less memory, less space, and it will, will be more efficient instead of creating a column first and then getting the result. Blank function. This blank function is used to find out if there are blank rows in our data. Why do you need to find out blank rows? Because it could play a vital role in understanding if there are empty rows, and we can understand that that our calculations in our column have data fulfilled because sometimes blank rows can 
alter your calculation and give you incorrect results so it's a very a good idea to find out about blank row blank if they are blank in our rows in the in a, in a particular column or multiple column so let's go and rename it to blank and to call it the function is called it's blank it's blank and you have to provide a value a value what do you need with it let's call out another function which is going to be a count we say that count and we will provide the name of the column let's say row id we want to see if there are blank in our row id column and it will return true or false if there are or if there are not let's go and click enter and let's go and see what does it return let's select our visual let's select card visual because uh, the maya will return true or false as we can see it will return it has written false because there are no empty rows or there are no blank rows in our data we can use the blank row function with other functions and combining them to get the accurate result for our data let's look at another function in power bi uh, this one is going to be about minimum and maximum values from a column let's create a new layer minimum and maximum function lets you find the minimum value out of a column and the same with the max value let's rename this uh, layer minimum and let's call it the minimum function now calling minimum and now what we have can do is provide the column name from which we want the minimum value to be extracted uh, i'm going to be using the sales column and just write the sales column name from the table and hit enter and we will get the minimum value let's test it out in the report pan adding card visual and just in hit the uh, measure that we created and we will get the minimum value uh, from the column sales uh, we can check this out as well to reassure that we get the right value and we, when we expand the sales column uh, we can see that there 1655 1, is the minimum value and in the uh, in the report tab we where you can see that it, it returns 1.66 but it has rounded it off let's now look at it, the max wave function same again if mayor and we can use that to call it let's call it max and call the max function and in we will provide the same column sales and hit enter and we will get the max value from the column uh, sales let's text it out and put here and yeah here we go we've got the max value and the minimum value so this is 1.16 million and this is 1.6 and minimum value I hope you liked the, today's video. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe and like button if you learned something. I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye.